Today I want to talk about something really exciting, and that is this, which is the HD0 AIO. After my last couple of videos, you all know my gripes with the original HD0 Mobula 6 from 2023. So when HD0 announced that they were producing this all in one and it was gonna be in a Mobula 6, I was kind of like, eh, I just don't think I can go back to a Mobula 6, especially not after flying one of these, which is the Beta FPV Air 65, which if you watched my last video, you know that I love this thing. You'll also know that shortly after making that video, I actually broke the first one of these. So I have um, two of these. I broke the UFL straight off of the board of the antenna and that was because of the way the canopy sat. The new one I got this week doesn't even have to be modified. Beta FPV have modified this uh, within there. The frame is actually modified a little bit as well. It's slightly different. And as a result of that, I've already kind of broken that frame, even though the other one lasted about 500 packs without breaking. This one kind of broke after probably about 20 packs. I mean, I was consistently diving backwards into concrete at the time, so I can't really hold it against this. Let me think in, what am I gonna do with the other Air 65 that was broken? Because it was the AIO, I thought, okay, maybe I can get another one of those and put it in, but they're out of stock everywhere. Rather than order the Mobula 6 and test drive that, I thought maybe I could like fix the Air 65 and put HD0 in it, which is in this one here. Let me focus on that so you can see it. It's uh, slightly different. And today I was originally making a video on something completely different, but I thought I'd test drive this and see what it was like. Now behind me here, I have both the HD0 Eco camera and the Lux camera. In this build, I've actually put the Eco camera. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, it's a little bit smaller as well. So I wanted to not affect the flight characteristics of this too much. I will be putting the Lux camera on a build in the future and I will show you what that looks like too. You can see that the HD0 board weighs slightly more than the Air 4-in-1 board including the ELRS receiver and the antenna. So the first thing I did was strip down the Air 65 that was broken and then I desoldered the motors off the board because I'm going to use the same motors for this one. Here's the HD0 AIO and that has everything from ELRS to the HD0 board to all of the all of the other components that you're going to need for this work essentially we just need to solder the pigtail the camera and also the motors hd0 boards do come with motor connectors but in order to save weight i didn't want to use these and i will say this that soldering these onto the board was not that easy the solder pads on this aio are quite small and i know that's true of every AIO, but they're particularly small on this one because they're trying to cram everything in. In fact, the most painful pad to solder was for some reason the camera ground pad. I had to redo this a number of times. And then when you're putting everything back together again, this AIO is, is slightly bigger than the Air AIO. And it also is bigger than a lot of other Whoop AIOs that I've worked with before. So it kind of squeezes into the frame, but it's not perfect. Putting this into the frame actually took me a lot longer to do than the rest of this build. If anyone's got any tips on how to get this type of board in there without losing these rubber grommets constantly, let me know. I haven't come across this before. The other reason why I wanted to use the Eco camera is that I know that it will fit the air canopy and still be pretty protected. The Lux camera is a little bit wider and a little bit taller, so it's not quite the same fit. So this is the weight of the original Air 65, and this is what it looks like with HD0. So yeah, it's two grams heavier. We'll see if that makes a difference to how it flies. So I set this up in Betaflight using the HD0 CLI, and then I also applied the Karate preset to it. So I haven't really done any tuning on this, and you'll see this in the flight in just a moment. So here we go. This is the first flight of the Air 65 with the HD0 AIO. Now it looks a little bit dark. That's because it is quite dark outside. The sun is starting to go down. So there isn't a lot of light. Uh, in a way, this is a, a good test to show you what this looks like in a kind of more low light situation. But um, I thought it would be good to show you my entire first flight to see what that was like. And then I'll come on to some of the other bits where I was kind of uh, testing some other pieces. But for this flight, I was just trying to get used to what this felt like with HD0 and see how this performs compared to a normal Air 65. And you can feel the difference in the weight almost instantly, like just there coming out of that power loop 
had to get on the throttle way, way earlier than I'm used to with one of these. So that two grams makes quite a big difference there. Two grams may not seem like a lot, but on a whoop, that is about 20% increase in weight. So, you know, it's quite significant. Uh, this does still feel like an Air 65. It doesn't feel so heavy that it feels sluggish or anything like that. It's typically when I'm either trying to uh, fling this around or trying to catch it off of another trick that it feels a little bit less responsive, but cruising around and everything else as well felt really good with this, much better than uh, that Mobula 6 HD0 that I used to have. So I'm going to try and loop this table and uh, yeah, you can see me kind of struggling to kind of fling it backwards and then also catch it. Uh, power loops are really good test of what this is like and you know I get some of these a little bit later on anyway as I get my uh, bearings on this thing I'm still just trying to get used to it at this point in time but yeah it's pretty good and the flight time was consistently around two minutes so for the second flight I wanted to go a little bit further out into the other end of the park just to see how HD0 would handle this when I'm flying analog, I typically don't go too far out here because I end up hitting tree branches and the picture quality isn't so good because it's quite dark over here as well. Um, but it seems to be working kind of fine over here. Uh, there's a little bit of break up, but you know, that is kind of normal with HD0. It's not quite DJI for that type of thing. Now, I don't know if this is because of that extra weight of HD0 or whether it's just because I can see a little bit more clearly with this. Um, but it definitely felt more stable. Now, I'm not saying that I'm the perfect pilot or anything, but this felt way more stable than it does when I'm flying the analog version of this, which can be a little bit more kind of twitchy. So, you know, this isn't stabilized in any way. I'm not saying that this is the most stable flight, but it felt good. And of course, as soon as I say that, I hit a tree, but I did feel very confident flying with this straight from the get-go it still feels like the air 65 it's just you don't have as much power to kind of catch at the end the main concern i have with this is just that extra two grams and how that's going to affect the durability of this when you're crashing i think the frame is probably going to suffer a little bit more with that extra two grams i'm hoping that divamath have designed this to actually take a few hits so it's quite durable as an aio because it would kind of suck if this broke um, too easily. That being said, uh, I have crashed this quite a lot today while I was testing. As I got a bit more confident, I started to do um, a few things with it just to see how it would react and ended up hitting the floor quite a lot um, and also crashing quite badly as well, which you'll probably see in just a moment. Uh, and yes, they weren't all on grass. Some of these were on the concrete. Some of these were into the walls or the uh, lamps that are here as well even with all those crashes this is still going it's still in one piece which i you know don't really understand how um, it survived some of the frame survived some of those crashes with the extra weight but it's still going the aio is completely fine as it is at this point in time as well so let me give you some final thoughts on what i thought this was like to fly and i'm really impressed so impressed that i think i will actually be getting a few more of these aios and doing other builds with them as well uh, and potentially replacing any other aios that i have when i kind of break them with this yeah, there's a slight weight penalty with this as well i think that if you actually use the s65 freestyle edition with the higher kv motors it would probably feel more like the s65 freestyle edition when you're using the HD0 AIO uh, or potentially using a 75 millimeter whoop as well. So I might do that in the future anyway, just to see how that performs. So this is actually my first time using the Eco camera. I'm kind of impressed by it. I'm looking forward to testing out the Lux camera. It is slightly heavier, I think about half a gram heavier. So there's a an additional weight penalty for that one. So I may put that into a 75 millimeter whoop rather than the 65 or 
I do have some higher KV motors from Weebleed FPV, which are the Screamers, which I think are about 32,500 KV. So that's like 9,500 KV more than the motors that come with the Air 65 originally. So it would be really interesting to see what happens with that too. So HD Zero have done it. I don't know how they've done it, but this is this is actually amazing for tiny whoops. There's a couple of things that just annoy me a little bit about this board if you're building it. It's probably not gonna be the case for the Mobula 6 because that's built specifically around this board, but things like the uh, USB port, which Beta FPV don't have these on their AIOs, this kind of protrudes out a little bit, which means that when you're putting a battery in there, it kind of sticks into the battery a little bit and you can feel it like rubbing on there. It's a minor inconvenience, but it's still not great. The pigtail comes off of the side here. Let me try and get that in focus. It comes off of the side here and it's kind of like bent through um, on the frame. That's kind of pushing onto this duct here because there wasn't enough space in between. In fact, you probably see it on this side maybe. Um, you can just see right there, it's kind of, um, it's right in there. Something else that I don't know whether this was by design, but Mr. Happy FPV, I'll leave a link to him down below, mentioned this in his video, but these HD Zero boxes are actually perfect for storing LiPos. So I've got like six 300 milliamp LiPos in there, and that's like a perfect little, little storage case for them. Just another little bonus for anyone that's gonna be using these for whoops. This is definitely a step in the right direction and it's quite exciting about the things to come. I know that yesterday on the Tiny Whoop channel, HD Zero announced new goggles and potentially a new Whoop AO for the future that would do 90 FPS instead of the 60 FPS that we get with these ones. Anyway, that's all for now. I will see you guys in the next video.